we'll see what we can do here. Uh, so, like I say, I've got I've got some questions here from some people here that I'm going to I'm going to try to address. OK, well, we hit 40. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, the point of today's conversation. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for joining me. This is episode four. Um, these seem to be going over pretty well. I appreciate everybody's attendance here. And uh, and and, you know, thank you for being customers and interested in our product. Um, I'm John Hawk. I'm the training director for Ocean Technology Systems. Um, I, I do a lot of these lectures where I cover different points of underwater communications. Uh, uh, I've been doing this for, for 20 years now, and um, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting journey. So, uh, but today we're going to talk about hardwire communications, uh, tips and tricks, and a little bit of troubleshooting with hardwire. And then I also want to talk specifically about um, troubleshooting. Uh, this be a bit of which I, I understand that uh, from years it's not going to get a bit of comms with hardwire or wireless as you do with hardwire and I'll talk a little bit about that but I want to get into wireless community or hardwire communications and the different sets that we have for public safety diving we have a uh, a set of communications that's it's called the mark 7 and the mark 7 is probably one of the most popular of communications out there. If you saw the uh, the the photo that we did to introduce this, this was on the uh, to introduce this episode. This was on the cover, and it's the Mark Seven. Um, the Mark Seven is a two diver hardwire system, four four wire two diver hardwire system that uses a headset for the tender, and uh, this boom microphone. I want to specifically talk about this uh, because of Keith's problems the problems that Keith's team's having, and I think it might narrow down to that. Can't swear to it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into that. But the, but the Mark 7, like I said, it's a full, du full duplex, four-wire system. And, uh, and then we also have the, uh, uh, the Mark 2 DCI, which is, um, I can go to share. I don't want to know if I'm, I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. I lost my screen. There we are. I, I'm, I'm not going to try. I, I went to it asked me if I wanted to leave this and I'm not going to mess with that. So uh, if you go to our website and you take a look at our different products, the other one that I was talking about is the Mark II DCI. Mark II DCI is in a box about this big. I was going to bring one with me, but tossing this stuff up in front of the camera is a little difficult. Um, but it's a two diver a system that you can stack three divers on each one. So you can run a total of six divers on a, on a Mark II. It's also a four wire system. It uses a speaker and it has a headset. You can get a, an optional headset with a boom microphone or use a handheld microphone, but it's not very portable. That's the thing about the Mark, uh, the Mark II compared to the Mark VII. The Mark VII, if you have to walk a shoreline, line management is always gonna be an issue with hardwire, uh, but you can walk a shoreline, you can walk a pier. Uh, with this, it's a, there's a belt clip, mounts to your belt, the headset, the headset is is fairly easy, but you're you're going to have to manage your lines as you need to. Uh, a couple a line tender, at least one line tender, if not two, for each diver is always hand. You can get a Y splitter for three divers on the Y splitter in typical public safety diving. We're diving primary diver, safety diver, and then 90% ready diver. The safety diver, if an event were to occur. Um, some of the, and then the, the Mark II DCI, it works the same way, same principle, everything, except again, it's not portable. Then we have the Mark III. The Mark III is a dedicated three diver system. So you have diver one, diver three, and uh, uh, you can stack divers on it. But generally, in reality, when we talk about stacking divers, people say, well, we can run six divers. Nobody realistically runs six divers. Three divers are going to be the most that you're going to want to run uh, unless you have a specialized going. Um, so we, we have the three three systems, the Mark 7, the Mark 2 DCI, and the Mark 3. Uh, we also have a comm box, and that's a two-wire, one-diver system, and that's very basic intercom used for, for commercial industry where um, uh, divers in the water, and by um, uh, OSHA regulations or whatever the case may be, he's required to and affords basic communication works well, uh, but it's a half duplex. Only one person can talk at a time. You're listening to your diver all the time, and then to talk to the diver, you have to reverse it. But uh, again, the point of this is I wanted to talk about troubleshooting a little bit with um, with wireless or with the hardwire communications. Some of the issues that we have are volume controls. 
and uh, with the volume, you're going to you're going to be listed. You have volume controls for each individual diver mm -hmm. here, and then you have volume. One of the primary problems that we have in, in, in uh, with anything, whenever you're talking volume controls, it's going to be a couple. You got the microprofessional on the inside, and this is kind of weird. Uh, so the microphone has to be uh, has to be properly positioned. Where again, it's off the tips of the lips. This is somewhat redundant from what I've talked about already in previous communications or previous uh, events that we've done here. But the microphone has to be right up off the corner of your mouth, and basically, if you purse your lips you should be able to feel that microphone. If that microphone's tucked down, then what you end up doing is you end up cranking up the volume of the diver really loud, and that cranks up the background noise. Again, I've talked about this in previous videos, uh, but I want to cover this again because I really can't address, address my microphone too. Um, but the ability to, the, you know, to get that signal into that microphone by being in close proximity to your mouth, um, you're booming your voice into that in that microphone. If it's not right there at a quarter of an inch, you lose half the volume, so you end up turning the volume. So you have to do a signal noise ratio. So when you turn the, the volume up, uh, because you have a weak sound audio coming into the microphone, you turn up all that background noise. Getting that microphone in the proper position, right off the tips of your lips or right here in the corner of your mouth, allows you to turn the volume down because you got a strong voice uh, coming through. And uh, oh, I'm sitting here scrolling through. <clears throat> I don't see any questions that have popped up yet. If you do, send your send your questions in. I don't want to digress. Send your questions in. I'll try to address them as they pop up. And uh, you know, at least at the end, of the, the uh, I'll try to go through some questions online or uh, you know uh, through discussion here. And then after that, if I don't get to your question, I will be reviewing all of them. But again, the microphone position for the diver is very important. There's one thing that I did not cover the, in previous videos, and Josh wrote and reminded me of this, is earphone position. That you basically have a manual uh, volume control with your earphones. If it's too loud, you back the earphone off your ear. If it's not loud enough, make sure that that earphone is pulled all the way up over your ear. When you're properly donning the mask, it's important that you pull the ear so that when you pull the straps, you're not sucking the neoprene pocket up into the buckle and then it binds it up and then you have a, you know, an issue with uh, tightening the tightening up your mask and getting it properly, the, the straps properly tensioned. So pay, in pay attention to where the earphones are. If you can't hear, move the earphone over top and then ask the top side to, uh, to t adjust volumes in. So you want to make sure that your speaker is right over top of your ears. And, uh, you know, that, that's really important. I can't stress that enough as to how, how important that is. So we've got microphone position. We've got earphone position. Now, the other thing that we have, and I see this all the time, is that when a top side is, it has their headset on, and since I don't need to listen to you guys because you're not talking, a lot of times we're sitting here and I'm watching them and they're trying to talk into the microphone and the microphone's out here. Principle applies to get that microphone in so that you've got that, uh, you, you know, you've got a strong signal going in. So the strong signal goes in, you can turn your volumes down and you're not blowing anybody away. So hopefully that makes sense. So there's, uh, uh, so there is, um, those are probably the biggest issues with, with volumes and make sure, and then play with your volume controls, turn up your diver volume. So where your divers spend a, a minute, you know, on the surface before, before the dive is part of the pre-dive check to adjust your volumes and get your volumes, uh, adjusted ballpark as to where you want. And when you get in the water, things are going to change. One of the issues with wireless or, or hardware communications that we don't really talk about enough, I think, is the jump of the signal from the speaker and uh, the speaker that goes over top of your ear to your tympanic membrane, to, the ear, to your eardrum. So if you've got, uh, uh, if, you've got a, if you're wearing a seven millimeter hood, as an example, you're going to have a couple of things. You've got water moving around, you've got air moving around. And there are going to be times when it's like, ah, I can barely hear them. And then all of a sudden, boom, 
without making any changes, the audio is going to come through because some air bubbles or air air pockets shifted around in your hood. You got water now to fill your airspace, and uh, and that that'll all make a difference in that. And that's really a bigger challenge than a lot of people take into consideration is that uh, that jump from the speaker to your eardrum and everything in between there that comes into play. So those are some of the big issues. Now, uh, Lou asks, is there different different connectors between the Mark 7, uh, I'm assuming DC7, I think it's me, Mark 7, and, and Mark 2 DCI. The Mark 7, hey, JR, do me a favor. I've got, got it in my box over there. Would you hand that to me? The Mark 7 uses amp connectors, and the amp connectors, these are what we call amp connectors. It's an amp and all connector, and this plugs into the Mark 7. The Mark 2 DCI, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. The Mark II DCI uses double banana plugs, um, and uh, you know, so <laughs> these these a lot of people look at these like, really, that's the best you can do. These are a legacy connector. They've been around for a very long time. They um, uh, the 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 beauty of these is that they're kind of delicate. You know, they end up getting broken. The wires end up getting split. Uh, with a small screwdriver and a pocket knife you can fix one of these in five minutes. Uh, that's really the beauty of them. And if worse comes to worse, with a, Mark, with a Mark II DCI, where these plug in, there's a, that also a terminal block, or it's a terminal You can unscrew that. If worse comes to worse, and you're in, a, in dire straits, you can rip these connectors down, wrap it around the post, and, and, and uh, uh, crank that down with a binding post. Up and, and run it. Make sure you put the ear Microphones, microphones on the microphones. Otherwise, you're going to be listening through the earphone and talk. You know, for the diver, it's going to be talking through the earphones and listening through the microphone. You make sure you you wire those correctly. So that's some of the issues. Um, new comps can't hear anything. Uh, I'll, I'll try to address some of these questions as we get to the end. So, um, is it still full duplex online? Yes, it'll be working functionally. Functionally the same as uh, Diver 2. So Diver Diver 2 and Diver 3, if they're if you're using a Y connector or a Y splitter, then it'll be a single control for both divers. So if one diver is too loud and the other one is hard of hearing, then uh, you're going to be a, at a little bit of a disadvantage. One of you will be because you're going to adjust to whichever one uh, screams the loudest, I think would be the way the way I'd best describe that. So uh, if you use a Y splitter, then uh, you'll be split off of, diver, most likely split off of Diver 2. So your Diver 2 volume is gonna control both Diver 2 and your safety diver in your back. Um, so you're not gonna have separate controls for, for both those divers. Same thing with the Mark II DCI. If you're on diver, and you, so you've got uh, a diver three stacked on diver two as well, the same volume controls are going to apply. Uh, same constraints are going to apply for volume, uh, for volume controls for diver two and diver three, or your safety diver and your ninety percent ready diver. Um, so let me uh, let me get into some troubleshooting issues. Some of the issues with with uh, with the with the wires uh, with hardwire. If you have squealing, as an example, uh, when you set your system up and it's in, you have what's commonly referred to as feedback. What that means is that you've got uh, signals crossing over, so you shorten the system. And it could be that your uh, uh, I got a I got a camera up here, here on the other end. It could be that your connectors um, are not uh, properly. I'm going to get a connector here for for a mask. Your your high an issue with your high use connectors. So make sure that they're plugged in. If your diver comes at any point with any of the hardware, you know, there we have a specialized military unit. I'm not going to talk about that. That does not squeal when you unplug it. But if you unplug this, the diver unplugs from the hardwire, it's going to squeal topside. So your tender is going to be ripping his headset off. It's like, holy crap, you know, I mean, I, that was really loud. So you need, to, you need to make sure that you tell as a diver if, uh, you know, unless it happens accidentally, which happens. Uh, but if you accidentally or if you, if you intend on disconnecting because you're trying to reconfigure underwater, whatever, you have a snag you need to clear, whatever the case may be, you shouldn't do that. But sometimes, uh, you know, people do it. But, and, or if you're on the surface getting ready to exit, make sure you're telling your top side, hey, ready to disconnect. So, uh, and they'll reach over, they'll either turn your volume down or they'll pull. 
So uh, you can, uh, so, but again, what will happen is this is in, in water. Your top side is going to hear a very loud wee, and uh, it's going to get their attention right away. And they're going to know somebody disconnected. Uh, so keep that in mind. Anytime you're offline, make sure your surface, you, you know, surface know. The other thing about this, and this is fairly important because if somebody unplugs and you got your Mark 7 sitting there, you took your headset off and it's just laying on the dock, and somebody unplugs underwater, especially in salt water, they're still going across there. There's a little bit of energy going across pins. So if it sets in the water for any length of time, what you're going to end up with is one small pin. So it's, and, you know, people call up and say, hey, I, you know, this, my, well, I can tell you exactly what happened. You left it plugged in and in the water uh, because it's electric. From the positive to the negative. Um, you're going to lose uh, you're going to lose uh, material, so the metal is going to erode away, and it can happen, especially in salt water, it can happen very, fairly fast. Leave it in the water 10, 15 minutes, and in some, somebody didn't notice the, that the headset was sitting there squealing when uh, you set it off to the side, and this was in the water. Then that's going to damage that. Now, how do you fix that? You do wrap up your com rope and you send it to serve and call in for an RMA. Uh, we have to replace the connector. There is no repair for that. We can't pop a pin out and put a new pin in. Uh, so be real careful with that. Now, if everything's plugged in, and you'll get that squealing, then you, you have, you've got an issue somewhere in your line. So you may have a failure in the comm rope. So what I'm going to talk about, and one of the things I, I, I really wanted to stress, because this has been a topic of conversation with a lot of con a lot of building, is uh, problems with their systems. And this applies both. You have a problem. You need what the problem is. So how do you do that? Well, you, it's a, you know commonly referred to, and everybody knows this, but I'm going to uh, talk about it anyway. Is a process of elimination. So if you've got what you think might be a bad headset, and your and your com rope and everything seems to be working well, along with your marks and everything seems to be working well, but I'm I'm not in the diver, but I'm uh, I can talk to the diver. Then then we want to go through the process of elimination. Okay, the well, first thing we want to suspect is always, and I, I talked about this before. I'm going to step past this real fast. Whenever you're troubleshooting a system, it's always batteries first. Check your batteries first. Even if they're brand spanking new batteries, it, it's possible that you could get a bad bad bell, uh, and uh, uh, even out of brand new out of the box. So you might you might flip them around and batteries try at least twice. That's the case. Uh, so batteries first, and then uh, and then microphone second. That your microphone is working. If you can, then you then take this set. If this is the one that's giving you a problem, then grab another mic, a headset with a boom microphone off of another mask, and plug that in and see if that fixes the problem. If that fixes the problem, then we've narrowed the problem down to this mask. Now we want to narrow it down. To is uh, again, what's the issue? Is it is it that, that you can't hear the diver talking, and you the diver can hear you? Well, then most likely it's going to be the microphone. So if that's the case, then you might. The microphone off. The microphone is held in place by just a pair of screws, and uh, uh, and you can swap them out between. These. It's not a bad idea for dive teams out there. Write this down. Pick up a spare microphone, the ME16R or the new one. If depending on what your wire configuration, you've got the little boots or the little feet on the inside where your microphone's attached. You want to pick up an ME16R hot mic, and uh, so swap the microphones out. If that fixes it, there you go. You know you've got a bad microphone. Look on the insides of the microphones as well. But look on the inside of the microphone. The microphone has a mylar membrane. I talked about the previous mylar membrane or the hydrophobic membrane. Mylar is clear. The hydrophobic membrane is white. Look in there and see if you see if there is a um, any any signs of rust or corrosion on the inside? Now, sorry, my back hurts. Um, so make sure that it's uh, that it, you don't see anything there. You can also take a microphone off, remove the microphone, put an ohm meter on it, and if the ohm meter reads, it should read 150 ohms, give or take a few. Now, will this tell you if you have a good microphone? Not necessarily. If it ohms out, you still might have an issue with the microphone. But I can tell you, if it's zero ohms you have a bad microphone. Um, so again, we're going through the process of elimination. And uh, so you don't want to be, you don't 
and uh, check it check it out and see what you've got. If the earphones are bad, if, if you had, are you hearing in one earphone? And the, then it may be the cable to the earphone, or it could be the earphone. It's it's the case you need to send it in to, to our service department because we don't have end user replacements for the, the uh, for the earphones. And this is the old or this is the new style earphones. The older style, this is called the E3, the old ones are the EP2. Uh, the EP look like a little hockey puck. Uh, they don't have the contours shaped on this. Um, these are little easily EP2s. They're also uh, the manufacturing process. A little bit different, a little more streamlined. Um, so uh, that's the difference between the EP2 and the EP, EP3. Uh, so check that out. What else? Connectors. Uh, maintenance of your connectors. I want to talk real quick about that because this is a problem. This is troubleshooting and this is an issue. Your high use connector, if you, uh, as I'm pointing down in there, if you look down on the inside and if it's being, uh, then you want to call the high use connector. To clean out the, uh, the high use connector, then what you uh, you're talking about your comms are glitchy, right, Sean? Um, if my comms are bad, bad, well, let me know. Shoot me a note. If you're in your, your high use connector, you want to clean that. So uh, clean, you want to use some uh, CLR. Uh, you know, get it from the hardware store, calcium lime rust. Uh, it's a, an acidic solution used for breaking down calcium lime and rust. Everybody should be familiar with CLR. Um, we use it in a lot of different things, especially cleaning our, cleaning our bathrooms um, or anything that has hard water deposits in it. If you can, you might pick up and go on Amazon and pick up some syringes or, or um, what are they called? The, like eyedroppers. I, there's a term for them. I can't think of what it is, but it's like an eyedropper. And you Buy these things, they're little plastic eyedroppers, and they're real cheap. But you want to you use those, and you suck up a little bit of uh, of the uh, CLR, and and put it, you know, mount it in there, and then to hold it in this upright position. At work, we have a, a board that has pins on it, and you literally you open up the clothes pin, you snap that in, and that hold this while we're working with them, and let it soak for you know three, four, five minutes, and then. And you want to flush it out. So then you're going to you're going to use a pipe cleaner. Um, a uh, if you go to the mask uh, to the makeup store, some place that sells makeup, you can pick up mascara brushes. Um, you know what they are that have never been used. Just wipe bristle brushes, and you can use. But pipe cleaners to work. Pipe cleaners have a wire bristle in them, or a little bit better. And uh, so you can go in and clean those out. So flush it out with water. And um, uh, and then follow it up with alcohol. A, a, a alcohol uh, in that is a, a, a pipe. It is what those things are called. The little drop, the droppers. Um, squirt, squirt some alcohol in there and help dry it out. So uh, the, uh, uh, the video on the audio is glitchy. I'm glitchy. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if the microphone position is this. Is this any better? I don't know. I don't know if that helped or not. Um, so clean those and that's and maintenance. Then silicone grease. Silicone grease. Your audio is breaking up. Well, I don't have any way to test. I don't know if it's good. I don't know what low on. I can unplug. Let me do this real quick. I'm going to divert up. And I'm going straight off the microphone on, on the computer. Is that better? Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Better? Ed, can you let me know if that's better? That sound? No, no reply yet. Follow plus one. No. Is that better, JR? Sounds good. Okay. Well, we'll. I'm going to skip the headset then. Uh, the microphone. You're going to be a little echoey, I think, uh, with that. So, um, hopefully that fixes. It. Okay. So just make sure these are lubricated. Good. Okay. Good. Make, make sure they're lubricated. Take a little bit of the silicon grease. Anybody that's been in my uh, my technician classes, uh, I'm in grease called zip slip. Okay. Good. Um, I'm still breaking up. Well, I'm not sure what the. I'm not sure what. 
a little bit of salt grease these up you want to grease off both, grease up both sides make sure you grease up put a little in each socket of a pair of connectors and then plug them together loose wipe off any excess but uh, that way you will have lubricant on these so look at, it won't hurt anything it won't interfere with the communications uh so make sure that it's okay good uh thanks it um so make sure that those are clean mark turn on the other end make sure your connectors whoops your connectors are they're in there i did notice mark seven i don't know if this is going to show but you can see some I need to take a little time out of this unit a little bit of love and clean these connectors up um and and that's, so that's important to make sure that you take care of your connectors okay so why are look about feedback squealing if you uh, it could be the calm rope. Um, if you're in it, uh, like your surface station, you just can't get the power up. But when you plug in the Mark 7, it should give you a little, uh, like a little weep at the very beginning when you plug it up in. If you don't get any juice, nothing coming out of this, swap your stuff around, then you're probably, probably here or your connectors. The older Mark 7s, and I talked a little bit about this. I'm going to be running along today. And the Mark 7. And so what it has is our spring terminals. Um, that around a little bit. You see the spring terminals there, and that eliminates the so you don't have that issue. So um, what's a good means for a known good speaker? Uh, top side speakers? Uh, you know, let's talk about that later on. Afterwards, I'll get with you on the impedance of the uh, the earphones are eight to around eight, eight, eight ohms on the uh, on the speakers for the ears. Um, okay, so is that still on me? Jeez. Okay, well, I'm going to think of the audio connection here. This might... So that's that's pretty much it with hard. Uh, we talked about the ear microphone. Uh, and this is a common can hear the down surface. What we want to is, is uh, we want to check our 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 transducers to see if our transducer is bad. I'll trans a little bit and on the technical side. Now this is a transducer off of an SSB 2010. We remove the transducer from the SSB 2010. And we put it on an extension cord, and this becomes now a surface station. So it goes on. It becomes a surface station. So what we have, <laughs> I'm a little jostling around here, is we have a, a an SSB 2010 that's set up as a surface station. Now, since the transistor is removable, if a, with the surface station, the CDK6 or any surface station for matter, if you can hear the divers, but they come weak, um, but the divers can't hear. There's two things that could be wrong. First off, as I mentioned earlier, you always want to suspect batteries for a second. Microphones can be in too, but I, I've already talked about microphones a little bit. I'm still, that's part of this system. There's, these are all links in a chain. Uh, so each one has to work. If you have a failure in one, it's, it takes thing down. So with the, uh, with the transducer, uh, back, back up a little bit. Batteries. You can hear your, but your diary for you is possible that your, your batteries are low. Think of it this way: when you have a signal coming in, your your um, uh, the receipt receipt of the unit is passive, so that doesn't take a lot of energy. So if your batteries are low, it doesn't take much. much. Now, with phone, uh, or in this case with from here when you key that microphone then you you spike the the output battery uh, the battery is going to it's going to drain the battery down and if your battery is weak it's just not going to get enough punch to be able to send that signal out so it could be the first thing if you if you, so you hear the divers divers can't hear you suspect batteries first secondly if the microphone uh check your microphone your microphone's working as i said earlier if your microphone's not working your microphone um, so 
cross elimination with that to make sure that your microphone is working. Now, the next thing is, is transducers. And transducers, a lot of people, then they don't know what's on the inside of this thing. Well, ceramic ring. It's this little ring. It's a little cylinder about this thing. Depending on the tran on the frequency, trans the smaller the the the, the transducer, the higher the frequency. I talked about that in a previous. I'm talking about speakers, you know, big speakers for bass, low frequency, little speakers for a tweeter, very high frequency. Same thing principle applies. Well, the ceramic ring is just that. It's ceramic. So what that mean is it could be delicate. Not really delicate. They hold up pretty well. But if you smack thing on the end of the whip uh, against the concrete. You know, you got this thing plugged in and somebody swings this around and it goes against the concrete. There's a potential of the trans getting cracked. So uh, one of the transducer, if, if you look at that ring and it's got just a little hairline fraction and it, it's now it's got a crack in it. When a signal's coming in, that signal's coming in and it's basically compressing that, that sort Ring, so it'll still pick up that signal and transmit it into the electronics package inside here. So, so you're going to hear your divers, but possibly not all because you have a system. Go to transmit. What happens? How does that transmit? That ceramic ring. Now, when you put energy to it, that, that ceramic ring is going to vibrate and it's going to open up. As soon as that crack opens up. And going. So the, the signal's coming in, but hmm, I, I don't know what the, John, I'm not sure about the signal here. JR, are you hearing me all right? Oh, okay. Well, do me a favor. Go on there and see if it's breaking up on my end. Okay, sorry. Sorry, guys. We're trying to troubleshoot here. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure where to go with this. We have good signal here. I got we have uh, um, hundreds of, uh, of megabits of bandwidth. So I'm not sure what to think. So I don't know if it's my my computer or not. Um, we'll continue on. If we have to recover this, we'll do it. I'll do this in a video too. Um, so the transducer. So always want to check a transducer. Easy way to check a transducer if you're using a C6. If you take this transducer off and grab one from another radio and you can swap them out and that way you've got it uh you you, you have a the means to that uh i have not in fact <laughs> um is, is this my personal one this is my personal one i have a um i need to clean check this out so, so look at that i'm gonna have a i go in the water they all are all chewed up Actually, uh, there's an O-ring that, that it has apparently been compromised in my radio. So I'm going to have to clean all this up before I go diving with this. And this is my personal radio. I've been using uh, 18 years now. So I've got to clean that up. So maybe you need to uh, uh, you know, check check those. All of, obviously, for the diver's end, if you have something that looks like that on the diver's end, uh, well, there's your um, you know, figure that out again with the with the radios with the SSB twenty and you want to look at that. Uh, I talk about the same with the ear, earphones. You're going to do it the same troubleshooting as with hardwire for the ear microphone assembly on your radios. If your microphone is bad, isolate the microphone. Earphones bad, isolate the ear. Connectors bad, isolate the isolate the connectors. If it doesn't work if the PTT does not work, then and you know, I'm, hopefully, if the if the video, when we download the video, save it. If it's glitchy, I'll go. I'll go in and do another video on the same subject, um, not on live, and record so you guys can go back and review um, the same subjects here. So again, through the process of elimination on all those components with the SSB twenty ten. Again, if you have a problem with your radio, um, check your transducer. And make sure connectors like I was just saying make sure that that's in good shape if you want to uh, I'm gonna put this other transducer on here if, if the radio power up then suspect your batteries suspect your connectors uh, on the inside there are wires on the inside that 
to them. Um, take the part and uh, let me show you these wires. So there's there's wires on the inside. You want to check both side both ends of that. The the nine volt battery app. This comes in a, in a service kit with, that has the the O rings in it. There's the O ring just came out. Um, and uh, so you want to check the O ring. Make sure that this O ring is in good shape. At that it's doing the ring is supposed to do. And uh, and then check the wires. Check your batteries to make sure. Your and um, uh, and and everything that goes along. What else do we have? So if you again, if, and diver's not transmitting, but your diver can hear. You have to check the microphone. So how is driving you nuts? I don't have far to go. Okay. Um, well, I'll again, I'll try. To, I'll see what's what's going on with my audio here. Uh, so the whole point is again is to go through troubleshoot your system, figure out where. Your problems are always suspect the batteries first, my second, and then get into the process of elimination to figure out where your other issues are. Also, with the uh, the surface stations, check your cables. Make sure your cables are in good shape. That there that nothing is damaged on your on when you get a blemish on the on the cable. Then uh, water is going to penetrate into the jacket, and that will be the blue signal there. So your your signal could come in and out with that. So okay, uh, so that covers most. most apologize for the glitchiness of my audio. I'm missing about half of my audio. Okay, well I have to just make sure we uh, don't have this issue in the future. Hopefully the recording will come up with good audio there. Uh, we'll see. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is ask people want to, if you want to check out good and, but if you have questions, post them up here, I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to just address questions for a little, this will be not a, quite as interesting and it's going to be a little broken, uh, as we read and scroll through the, the questions, uh, uh, you know, if you need to reach out, thanks again. Uh, if you guys, as I mentioned last time, um, in this with another group, that I did a Zoom meeting uh, with, uh, if you're doing any things, but with your public safety agencies or dive club, if you'd like to, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, let me know. And we don't charge for anything for that, but I'll set in on a, uh, on a Zoom meeting with you and I can go through and I can talk about comms and so forth. Um, so thanks for coming and I appreciate everybody attending here. But roll through the question. So, PT mode, PT mode in your are you, are you PT hardwire or wireless, Keith? Uh, or, or no, it's Kevin. I'm no, Kevin Tibbetts. PTT mode is used only in wireless. Hardwire is full duplex. You should know, shouldn't have to push the push the talk button. Uh, you hear yourself breathing very loud. Um, if that's on a wireless system, and this is something I could. You're probably actually, if, if you push the talk button and you're hearing your divers talk, then Vox. And Vox is voice operated transmission, V O X, voice operated X for transmission. And uh, what happens in Vox is when you're talking into, you have your mask on, it's your microphone. When you when you talk into the into the mic, the electronics in the in the in the the uh, SB twenty ten understand your what that's your microphone. I'm a fan of Vox. I'll be honest with you. Uh, with Vox, whatever. Um, and and uh, this is in Vox mode. The way you check it is you push your push to talk button um, on your mask. You push it. When you're on the SSB 2010, the SSB 2010 is powered up. You're going to push the push to talk button. And this is a whole other, I could do a video on voice menu. In fact, maybe I will. Um, voice menu, you push it two, three, when the radio evaded and the radio will come on, little girl on the radio will come on and tell you what your, what your are. It'll say, uh, it'll come on and say, uh, transmit, 
push to talk. Uh, let, me, let me get this. It transmit channel squelch volume. It'll say push to talk. Uh, channel one, Vox on, or uh, on, side high, receive high. Those will be your volume settings the last for last few. So if you push it one, two, three, and it says Vox, then channel one, then what you're on, you're on Vox. And the thing about Vox mode is the inside of a mask is not a quiet place. You end up false triggering, uh, and that could be an issue. So you want to make sure you uh, that you you're not in Vox mode. Make sure you have your settings right. I generally run my in uh, push to talk uh, channel, whichever one usually that talks about as well. And uh, I run my squad. I'll talk about twenty. Um, squelch on or squelch off. Squelch will be on, but you have to get your squelch adjusted. Right. So I can again. I'll talk about squelch in a few future videos. Squelch can be uh, that's a long conversation in upon itself. How you get your squelch all set up properly, and then and, and then your receive volume and your side tone volume are high. Um, that's the way I run because I'm half, half anyway. So those are some of the issues. So, um, we'll talk more about that. Uh, Kevin, do me a favor, shoot me a note. If you want, we can talk. I can go into it in more, more detail with that. So we'll see what we can do. Is my all oh, that still glitchy here? Are you monitoring? Uh, glitchy for you? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, we need to figure that out. Lou, relatively simple. Uh, we use a Mark II to be used with wireless, such as 2010. The Mark II can, is wireless, is hardware only. The Mark II is not a surface uh, for a wireless. There's no mixing uh, and matching of uh, hardware to wireless units. The, the Mark II is a, is a surface hardware intercom. The, for the surface station, you need to use, as I just said, a 2010 with a CDK6 headset and the cable, or you need to use uh, an STX-101, which are or the or the um, uh, the uh, uh, what's the other one? No, the SPS hundred for the buddy phone, sir. I'm sorry, uh, a little bit. So the Mark II DC. The, uh, okay, um, huh? I'm going to try. Anybody? I'm going to break off this. And it's too annoying to try. Let's, uh, I'm going to go to my telephone. So I'm going to put this down. If you're interested, and I'll go, so I'll scroll through the gear, but I'm going to mount my telephone here to the side and I'm going to bring it up and see if, if that fixes, uh, fixes our problem here. So, um, bear with me. We'll go ahead and shut down. Anybody interested in still attending the questions and answer session? Um, I'm going to disengage. So I'll be reengaged here in just a minute. So, with me. I'm going to go ahead and call this and uh, I'll be right back on live with my, uh, on from my cell phone. So I'll be back in just a minute.